This is an image sent from the International Space Station, received on a simple handheld radio. Right now you are surrounded by radio repeater towers that you can communicate through at long distances with just a handheld radio. If you are interested in wireless communication like HackRF, Flipper Zero or MeshTastic, you might be thinking about getting into amateur radio, or at least you should be. While you're thinking, getting a handheld radio is a cheap and great way of dipping your toes into the hobby. I've been sent this radio by TalkPod to have a look at. This could be a good beginner's radio, but let's first talk about what handheld radios are used for, and then I'll tell you what I really think about this one. The most typical handheld radios can receive and transmit on two frequency bands, one in the VHF range and one in the UHF range. Among a lot of other things, within these two ranges you find two frequency bands dedicated to amateur radio use, known commonly by their approximate wavelengths as the 2 meter band and the 70 centimeter band. Radio frequencies have to be regulated to avoid random people or equipment causing interference on important frequencies used for police, medical and aeroplane communication. As radio amateurs, our dedicated frequency bands are where we are allowed to roam free and carry out experiments. We get this access by taking a simple test and getting a call sign. Not only do you gain a license to transmit on the amateur bands, but you also gain a lot of really useful basic knowledge. Just like a driver's license gives you access to drive on the public roads. These typical handheld radios aren't just made for amateur radio use though. They were also meant for business use, and businesses usually rent one or more frequencies. So the radios have quite a flexible transmit frequency range that also happens to cover marine channels, license-free PMR, FRS and GMRS channels. Just don't go transmitting where you're not allowed to. You can always listen in though. For years, people's first radio have been a Baofeng. I've got this fancy orange one, but they are all basically the same. They're popular not because they're good, but because they do the bare minimum at a very low price. The A36 Plus falls into this category of cheap, just fine radios. But it does have a few extra cool features. First of all, you can charge this radio using a USB-C cable plugged directly into the battery. Charging cradles are really annoying, and no radios from this point on should be released without having the option of charging through USB-C. There is no excuse. Secondly, this radio has a wider receive range than the default transmit range. It is among other things able of receiving aeroplane communication. Airplanes transmit in AM modulation instead of the usual FM, and the AM reception on airband on this radio is much better than the one found in the Quansheng UVK5. This radio also has a nice looking color screen that is easy to read. And besides the regular boring black version, it also comes in transparent and green. So that radio tower I was talking about in the introduction. Well, I just realized that if you're new to radio, you might not even know what a radio repeater is. And if you're looking into handheld radios, you really should, because they will massively improve what you can do with this. So let's sidestep for a second, and then I'll get back to some of the lesser good things about the A36+. Plus. The range of a handheld radio is basically line of sight. That is why it is relatively easy to receive communication from the International Space Station, even if it is hundreds of kilometers up in space, because there is only sky between it and us. But if you want to talk to your friend downtown on another handheld radio, and you have hills and buildings in the way, He's going to be more difficult to reach than objects in low Earth orbit. This is where radio repeaters come in. The repeater's antenna is usually placed up high so that it covers a large area. This means that any handheld radio that can see the radio repeater can transmit to it and have that signal be retransmitted to all other radios that are within range of that repeater. A radio repeater is basically two radios linked together. One radio receives on one frequency, and the other radio simultaneously retransmits everything onto a different frequency. In your handheld radio, you program in the repeater, so that you are always listening to the output frequency. And when you press transmit, your radio automatically switches over and transmits on the input frequency of the repeater. 
Because radio repeaters hugely increase the usefulness of handheld radios, it is a big priority of a lot of radio amateurs to voluntarily put up and maintain repeaters in lots of places around the world, or even in space. I've got a few repeaters within range of where I live, and you most likely do too. When you're a licensed radio amateur, you're allowed to use these repeaters, and they sometimes become the frequency local radio amateurs will meet up and talk on. There are maps available online of where your local repeaters are located and what frequencies they operate on. There are also other kinds of repeaters, like digital voice repeaters such as DMR, D-Star or Fusion, as well as those for APOS known as Digipeters. But that is beyond the scope of this video. So back to this radio because I've been holding back on a lot of things that are frustrating me about it. Let's just say that I have some suggestions for improvements. First of all, the user interface could be improved in many ways. For instance, when you receive a signal, the signal strength is indicated by this RSSI meter on the right. But when you transmit, your transmit power is indicated by this other meter on the left that looks like a signal meter, but isn't. Why these two separate meters? They can never be active simultaneously, and all other radios just have them combined. Weird. Then there are the menus. All these cheap radios, since the original Baofengs, have the same similar menu structure copied from each other, with the same abbreviations made for small screens. But this radio has a nice big screen, with lots of room for actual menu text. It's just not used most of the time. So we still have to guess that ABR actually is backlight standby time, or that SC-REV is scanning mode. And then the options in scanning mode, TO, CO and SE, are actually time, carrier and search respectively. There's so much room here, just put the text in the menu. What is even more confusing is that when we want to change a menu item, the up and down buttons are suddenly reversed. And what's even going on here with the blinking and the red text? Another baffling decision is to have the squelch setting, which is again unnecessarily abbreviated SQL, be a long list of numbers instead of just having a horizontal slider. It feels like they've put in this nice color screen and had no idea what to do with it. On the main display we could have had the option to see both channel name and channel frequency at the same time. There's plenty of room, but no. So there are other things I haven't dived into, like the audio having a weird auto adjustment and also the firmware updater is entirely in Chinese. But let me just leave you with a few tips and tricks if you do decide to get this radio. So obviously you switch between the two channels you are monitoring by pressing the AB button. But if you hold down the AB button, you start scanning through your program channels. If you hold down the menu button, you can switch between VFO and channel memory mode. If you hold down the back button, you change the memory display from name to frequency to channel number and back again. On the number buttons are printed the most commonly accessed menu options. And you can quick access these by pressing the menu button and then the appropriate number. While it is possible to program in channels using the buttons on the radio, I think it's far easier to use the open source radio programming software known as Chirp which does support the A36+, Plus, although I had to update the firmware of the radio to make it work. The radio fortunately comes with the programming cable, which is a nice bonus. It also comes with a USB charger, as well as the usual cursed charging dock. So finally, we need to talk about harmonics and spurious emissions, and how radios like this one can sometimes cause unintentional interference, and how this one in particular might be guilty of that. It is a bit of a complicated topic, but I'll try to keep it short and simplified. So you know how when playing a note on an instrument, that there are some other notes that naturally fit with the first note. These are the harmonics. A musical tone is simply an oscillating object that causes sound waves at that specific frequency but also simultaneously smaller sound waves on the harmonic frequencies. Curiously, the same thing happens when you transmit a radio signal, even though those are transmitted in the electromagnetic field and not as sound waves. But where we in music desire to amplify these harmonics by playing more notes on those frequencies, 
In radio, we really don't want to be transmitting on any other frequencies than the fundamental frequency. This is a receiver listening to the second harmonic of the frequency that I'm transmitting on. As you can see, we can receive the transmission on a frequency totally different from the one we are actually transmitting on. All radio transmitters produce harmonics, but if they have good enough filtering of the output, the signal strength of the harmonic signals will be low enough that it isn't a problem. There have been videos on YouTube previously showing absolutely horrendously uncontrolled harmonics from the A36+. However, a recent video from Ham Radio Tube shows that apparently the newer productions of this radio have indeed solved the issue and put in sufficient filtering. Unfortunately, I don't have the equipment to test this myself. The TalkPot A36 Plus is a handheld radio, and it does what it needs to, plus a bit more. I think it's unfortunate that it didn't put more effort into the firmware, and it gets especially difficult to recommend when you can get a Quan Sheng at about the same price and have access to loads more, much better, unofficial firmwares. I hope I've given you a small insight into what the A36 Plus and handheld radios are all about. Thank you.